Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the Modern Survivalist and this is gonna be five knives that make me happy. This is something I did for my Spanish channel, Supervivencia Moderna. It was a, a challenge among several uh, knife channels and I thought I'd do it in my English channel as well, giving that it gives you an excuse as to talk about some of the things we enjoy and the way we go about these things. So five knives that make me happy. I'll start with this one, which is not in the list. Definitely didn't include it in, my, in the Spanish version. But this is uh, my first knife, the first knife I ever owned. And as horrible as it is, as crappy of a Chinese knockoff of a jungle kid that it is, it's uh, for me the knife that started it all. I mean, it is as cheap and as cheesy as it gets. It actually even says Rambo there on the blade. This thing, believe it or not, it's still sharp, it still cuts. And this is not the worst saw uh, you'll, you're gonna be finding in a knife. Actually, the, the M9 has worse of a saw than this one but anyway this thing survived everything i've thrown it against countless trees chopped down branches and twigs and threw it in the dirt and god knows what else and construction magical chinese crap i guess it is and look at the how this is put together it has a the shortest cheapest tang there is in the planet and a nut and a washer i guess keeping all that in place and in spite of that it just held together a lot of abuse and it's still going on i don't know what it is if it was just you know the gods of steel wanting me to not give up on the entire thing and keep on using it but anyway it's amazing how much this knife um held on, I just dropped one of these <laughs> rings, I'll look for it later on. Even, the, I think that the compass is even working, if that's even possible. Anyway, my first knife, and yeah, the one that got every, everything started for me. So, the um, five knives that make me happy. I will guess I start with this one. Number five for me is the Zero Tolerance 0561, which is one of the Blade uh, Blade Magazine, some of the, one of the best knives of the year, I guess. I I think it was 2011, 2012, don't quote me on that, but I definitely made it to the cover of the magazine as one of the best knives of the show or whatever it is. It's definitely one of the best looking knives I've ever seen. One of the best folding knives for sure that I've ever seen. It just looks beautifully well. It's a fantastic knife as well, don't get me wrong, made by Zero Tolerance in US, designed by Hinderer and made of the finest uh, materials you can find. This is all titanium 3D um, um, made um, the, the contour of, of the handle is just very nice. It's not all that comfortable though, it has a few sharp spots around. Blade is LMAX steel. Some of the earlier versions of this knife, they hadn't gotten the heat treatment with LMAX all that great and there were people complaining about this. By the time they started including the uh, steel insert on the frame lock, it's, it was definitely a dress and, and the knife is a, is a real beauty. And of course it's a utilitarian uh, knife as well. The idea is to actually use this knife. You have the flipper, it's ball bearing, and it just opens super super fast. Um, I'm not using it to be honest because I bought it already when it was out of production and I paid quite dearly for it but this is one of the uh, most uh, one of the knives I have that I like the most and it made me understand these things as yes the knives can be works of art as well even production knives because this is very much a, a production knife um, and this is one of the of the knives I like the most. Now, following up with number four, this is definitely not a, a production knife. This is one of those extremely one, <laughs> you know, one of a kind knives. And this is uh, a knife um, forged by uh, Mariano Gugliotta, a, a very well-known uh, blacksmith in Argentina. It's the Black Widow. And yes, it has a little symbol there, the Black Widow here as well. And it has this beautiful blade which I mean this is a completely functional tough as nail knife no doubt about that but it also has this beautiful nice scrimshaw over here of that spider made by I think it's Christian Silva if I'm remembering the name well it has the name written over there if you have the eyesight for that 
you could probably see it there. But this is this is one of those knives that you you kind of get that you're going you're closing that gap between what is a functional and and, and what is you know when, when knives start becoming works of of art and you start appreciate appreciating them like so. Um, I, I did my a, a class on on forging knives with. Uh, Mariano and actually forged this knife that I do have here as well. It's this tiny little thing, but this was one of those you know experiences that teach you a lot about making knives, and that's you know part of of the path. You know, going to number three, that would be this knife, also one of a kind knife. This is a, a facon knife, facon our traditional gaucho knife from uh, Argentina, and this is this is a knife that man, it has so much of a story that when I did the Spanish version of this video, the guy that made this knife actually contacted me because someone told him about it. It's that special, it's that unique, and that rare. So uh, a facon is basically like a, a gaucho's knife. A gaucho Gaucho would be like a, like a cowboy, but more of an outlaw, more of a wild man living off the land and just you know doing whatever it is that, that he wants on his own. So uh, a, a gaucho is a, like, a more, like a more free spirited kind of, of cowboy. Sure, sometimes they work in the fields for others, but usually they're kind of roaming around and just eating whatever they can hunt and you know may, maybe stealing a, a cow here and there. So they're often, they often have a, 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 had a, a bad reputation later on they got more civilized but for a gaucho he didn't have the, the money the technology or you know a gun wouldn't have been the, the weapon for him because it's a lot more expensive it's a lot more fragile ammunition so a gaucho instead of a of a revolver he had a facong knife and a facong knife is this it's a big big knife which he used for everything for fighting for dueling which there was a lot of that going on and when they got drunk in in one of these taverns you know and they felt their honor was insulted they would just go at it usually draw first blood but sometimes it went beyond that anyway this is uh, a very traditional uh, facong knife and even made in the traditional methods for the, the gaucho facong was made using broken sabers uh, swords uh, bayonets or you know some piece of, of steel sometimes even using machetes for example this one is made using an old Collins machete so you actually see the marking there it makes it quite a bit thin but it's very lightweight and super fast in the hand which is nice especially if you're gonna be using this uh, for for chopping or even you know, like a bit of a, of a machete as well this this is just a, a great you know work of art so yeah, and they would have like forged proper blades and, and uh, but the thing was that any gaucho that was worth his um his salt, he would have a, a nice facon, and this is definitely a good example of that. All of this is silver, and this, made by Diego Luque, all of this is um, a lost wax silver, so you, you see those uh, horse legs there. And same here, same thing here, leather, black leather, and more and more silver. So the story with this knife goes the following way. I saw how this knife was being made in, a, in an Argentine a knife forum. And I remember thinking, man, that thing is so beautiful. I wish I could have it. I think it was already sold. It was commissioned. And years later, uh, I was just, you know, surfing around, seeing what I could find. And I came across this knife in a, in a like in a, in a eBay type of website and I knew exactly what knife it was because I saw how it when it was made so I had already published my first book I had a few bucks and as soon as I saw as I saw it I said I'm buying it I got in contact with the guy selling it turns out it was you know a, a knife that had gone through a, a previous owner and the owner fell out of luck and had to sell it or anyway I ended up purchasing the knife and it's been with me ever since and it's not gonna be leaving my side because it is uh, definitely a special knife um, it, again so much so that just yesterday when I published the video of this knife in Spanish, the, the guy that made it, Diego Luque, contacted me and said, yeah, that, that's the knife I made. <laughs> sure, sure enough. Of course, how are you going to be confusing it with anything else? Look at that thing, how beautiful it is. So yeah, I, I think I'm going to be having, for those of you that speak Spanish, I'm going to be having it him hopefully one of these days in my, in my website for a, a bit of a chat, an interview, and talking with him about these things. So 
Number three, my beloved silver Facon knife. Uh, number two would be a knife that is definitely very important for me and seems to be pretty much a, a factory production knife. At this point it is, but for me it has special significance because it's this, the knife I designed myself. This is my survival knife made by Aitor in Spain. Uh, Aitor, for those of us, I mean, a lot, I realize now that a lot of you guys have no idea what Aitor is. Um, this is mostly for people in Latin America, people of my generation growing up, uh, guys of, of somewhat about my age. We all grew up watching in magazines, you know, those um, advertisings of the Jungle King, uh, Jungle King 1, 2, some of those iconic survival knives. Those were made by Aitor. In fact, I mean, it's so iconic that this knife, this is simply a, a cheap knockoff of what a real Jungle King 2 is made by Aitor. But of course, that is a, a several hundred buck knife, or at least it was back in those days. In fact, you, I'll leave the link below for my knife and the rest of the Aitor line uh, there if you want to follow it. If Check with the discount code they gave me. If it's still working, you get a 25% discount code and whatever it is you find there, definitely worth it try. Um, but anyway, Aitor has always been one of those uh, huge brands for us in Latin America and actually getting the opportunity of making my own knife with them, it's you know a, a huge, huge privilege. So this is uh, the, the knife I, I designed and you know made uh, by them. Couldn't be happier with it, the entire experience. It was a long uh, journey, but it's done Anyway, I just like it a lot. Of course, I designed it myself. How could it be any other way? Um, and this is one is the 0001. Get that focus. So yes, this is the first one out of the, the production line. Uh, yeah, definitely, guys. If you like this sort of thing, check it out. Especially with a discount, I very much doubt you'll get a, a better quality knife than this one for that money. And yes, they do ship internationally and all that good stuff. Just give it a look if you're in the least interested in this sort of thing. So yes, it's a, a beast of a knife and number two for me. So if the knife I designed myself is number two, which one is number one? Well, that would be my grandfather's EDC knife, which is is this little pocket knife that I have here. And honestly, if, if I have to leave behind everything else in terms of, of knives and stuff, this is probably the thing I would be keeping. Everything else I can replace. This uh, has no replacement. I mean, yeah, sure, of course, not everything here I can replace, uh, but even from the stuff that it cannot replace, this is the one that has by far the most importance for me because it's uh, the knife that my grandfather carried in his pocket for for years. You know, he's he he was uh, you know he passed away several years ago, and it's still very much missed. A knife made in Toledo, Spain. Beautiful uh, craftsmanship, by the way. Still very much, all very sh sh strong and sturdy. And the steel, it's, it's stainless steel, but it takes a very nice keen edge. Still razor sharp. I mean, I of course sharpened it over over the years. Definitely, I'm not using this anymore. I think I use it for a little while until I realized how stupid that was. But yeah, has that that big, you know, has a very decently sized blade. Big, big ma main blade. It has a smaller secondary blade, screwdriver, so it's like like a like a um, Victory Knox or a Spanish <laughs> Victory Knox. It has a, a huge pair of scissors. This is very interesting. Check this out. It has a mat for you scissors guys. Check out those scissors. How big they are. These are huge. So yeah, and it has a punch corkscrew. Anyway, my grandfather's knife is definitely one of the knives that makes me the most happy and I hope it have it with, with me for a, a very long time. Pass it along to my, my own grandkids maybe one day. Not my kids, my kids have enough guns and knives for, for themselves for as much as they want. So yeah, I'm gonna be jumping uh, to the next generation. I, I just wanna mention a couple things because this was like a, a top uh, five because that was a challenge. There are a couple more knives that, although they don't make it in the list, if the list was just a 
little bit longer, they probably would, which would be maybe these three knives. So let me explain this just a bit. This is a, a basic Glock knife. I just beat the crap out of this knife. I've been beating the crap out of this knife for a very long time. I have several Glock knives because I think that for the money, like 30 bucks it is, it's, you, you just cannot beat it. For 30 bucks you get an Austrian made Glock, which is, you know, that's pretty awesome. And yeah, it's, it's clever, it's smart. It's a very simple design. It's, it's soft, it's 55, Rockwell 1095 so it's gonna be taking a beating and you kind of have to sharpen it very often it's not gonna be taking you know, it's not gonna be holding an edge like I'm gonna be getting into that in a second like the the steel I use in 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 my own knife but I sharpen it often and I don't mind sharpening I actually enjoy sharpening knives and I don't know if this happens to you guys but for example in my in my Leatherman charge it has a s30 V steel which it rarely needs sharpening it's a lot less frequent that I'm sharpening it but I actually like sharpening stuff, so this is giving me an excuse, and you kind of have to look after it more because if not, it's going to be rusting and looking even worse. Uh, broke the tip, reshaped it. Anyway, it's one of those things that you have fun messing around with. Uh, another knife that I like a lot is this Ontario Mod. Uh, this is a, like a, a special version that they came up, like a cheap version of the of the K-Bar that Ontario came up with. You see it hasn't got that you know, clip and the, the sharp uh, back of, of the spine there. So it's one of those cheaper uh, versions, uh, but I just enjoyed finishing the handle, the leather handle with, with beeswax, and it's the kind of thing that, almost like this, you kind of have to take a little bit more care of, and, and I enjoy that. And besides, you know what I love about this thing? The smell, this leather smell all the time, the beeswax, so yeah, this is something that I like too. Man, maybe these should have been in the top five, <laughs> but it is that. Um, and finally, the, the prototype of, of my knife, which is uh, you know the one I just showed you. This is the prototype that I use for testing. I just did some of the most stupid, ridiculous things with it, and it just keeps on beating. And it, it got to a point that for for some of the videos I did with you know kind of like promoting knife and seeing what it would take and such, I, I use it to uh, cut a piece of, um, of of wall, like brick, mortar, cement, and just sharpening it. Again. Again, after that just you know holds an edge beautifully well these first ones were n690 the current ones are n680 boiler steel made in Austria and it, the n680 is even tougher than this one so you know just super happy with it and I'm just you know uh, still testing it to see how much it will take. I used it recently to punch a few holes in, in a barbecue that I have that was uh, it's outdoors and was kind of holding water when it rains so it just punched a few holes through the, the, the sheath, uh, the, the, the steel of the barbecue and I got, a, I did a, um, a somewhat of a, of a decent handle here because this was just wrapped in paracor so now it's, it's useful as a beater knife or testing knife and it has a, a, an okay and a decent enough handle that the, the, the kind of thing that this knife I think deserves. Anyway guys, that's my little story with some of the knives I enjoy and like the most and why that is. See you in the next video folks, have an awesome day, take care.